tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. So, for um, this episode, I invited this organization called Life Risks PH. And with me today is Norman Mendoza. He is the co-founder and advisor for Life Risks PH. So let's welcome Norman Mendoza. Hi, Norman. Hi, Erica. Nice hey. to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you also for being on my show. I'm very, very excited to have you here. And you know what? It's super timely because today is actually a Mental Health Day. So, happy Mental Health Day, everyone. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Today is... Uh, right. Exactly. Serendipitously, today is the World Mental Health Day. And um, we've just actually posted um, by our very own Miss Shane posted our um, celebration for the World Mental Health Day. So happy World Mental Health Day to everyone watching and listening. All right, I know it's so it's so timely and I'm really excited because that's what we're going to talk about uh, today. So I'm a, I'm a local uh, from Pampanga um, and I graduated my BS Psychology degree from the Angeles University Foundation. Um, and then I st studied overseas. Um, I studied my master's in counseling and psychotherapy in University of St. Joseph in Macau. And then I taught a couple of years um, from a AUF and then I went to Holy Angel University. And then my last teaching stint was in De La Salle University, Manila, which was a, a, a very exciting two term. Um, and then now I'm actually in Hong Kong. So it's possibly raining where you are now, but it's uh, sunny yeah. over here. I'm okay. studying my doctoral studies um, yeah. in educational, majoring in educational psychology um, and doing some work on well-being and mental health. So that's yeah. um, what I've been up to um, aside from watching the NBA Finals which my <laughs> team Miami Heat won uh, this morning. So that's good for mental health. Yeah, sports gives us some a sense of normalcy sometimes. Yeah, I'm sure it does. I mean, I'm not really a sports fan. No, I'm surprised that Miami Heat won. No offense. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's always like yep. Lakers or all the culture. <laughs> what is Life Risks PH? So, Life Risks PH is a nonprofit youth organization registered under the National Youth Commission. And we are a group of professionals um, in based locally in Pampanga. Um, we are a group of um, 11 to 12 volunteers and then we have 19 members. We're a small group. Um, so our main concern is to increase the well-being, uh, uh, sorry, increase the literacy and uh, awareness on well-being and mental health, um, especially among the youth, right? Especially among the youth. And um, that's what we do. And our, our five-year plan is to take a very important role in the establishment of a crisis and suicide prevention center in P Clark Pampanga. That's our that's our why, that's our north star. Um, of course, we embrace our core values, but that's our mission. Yeah. So, nakikipagtulongan kami sa mga teachers in Pampanga. They are inviting us. We're working closely with DepEd San Fernando. Um, we've a lot. We've worked a lot uh, with people who trust us, and um, we're. A, a team of many psychometricians, registered psychometricians, who are licensed to to practice their profession. Um, and um, yeah, we're happy that we're so. One of our projects, main ones, is um, live talks. So before the pandemic hit, we always have invitations to talk to schools. We visit them. We go there for free. We're donation based. So if they give us nothing or one thousand or two thousand or whatever um, money there is to donate um, we go to the school and I think our life counts is uh, north of 10,000 now we, we call them life counts to every student okay. who participated in our life talk so yeah so we're, we're counting um, and then we visited many schools and many regions as well yeah so we, masaya kami kasi we are being able to help people learn more about mental health and learn more about okay, let's talk about more on what you guys do, your projects. Maybe you can give us um, what you've done already. Right. Yeah. Right. So a lot of the work we did, major limited sha online because of obviously the pandemic has hit us and um, our live talks were hindered. 
as we all, there's an always all, there's always an ongoing joke among the movers na parang we've never missed a month ever since we were founded in November 2018 every month we had the live talk we went to a school some the major the biggest school was a a public school and the, we, it's a full covered court grade 7 8 9 and 10 uh, senior high school students we never missed a month until uh, covid-19 kind of um, happened in 2020 so we pivoted so we made an effort that we will be able to transition our movement our volunteer work online and one of our major projects this year was gpals covid-19 Right, mm-hmm. GPALS COVID-19 is a 15-minute self-evaluation. Um, mm-hmm. People open a link and they'll be asked questions ba- based from reliable and valid research instruments. And then with the platform that we use, which is Qualtrics, um, which is being provided generously to us by my university here in Hong Kong Education University, mm-hmm. um, we we use that platform so that when stu- when students Um, community residents all over the Philippines. I mean, it's available both in English and Filipino, um, which is uh, I don't want people to be looking for it now because it's um, currently under maintenance. We'll release it um, in one or two weeks' time. We're ki- kind of re- um, revising our questions because the context when it started and the context now my, is a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, but going back, they will take it. It's a 15, 10-15 minute survey, and then it has questions about social support, sleep. Um, anxiety, depression, um, well-being, happiness, um, optimism, and even hope. Um, so they answer this, and then immediately after, they'll get they'll get a reliable well-being score, and the score will provide them as well with some evidence-based tips so that they will be able to recalibrate their sleep, um, seek for more social support if it's low. So we have that as um, part of our GPALS COVID-19. People the manual part it comes dun sa statistical analysis. Okay. Right? When we have the data, of course, we're not going to look at individual responses. Uh-oh, uh-oh. We're going to look at the data in aggregate, so in total. Um, so we really studied it and the partly good, partly neg- not so good results. So we know mm-hmm. that some 20 to 24% of people based in NCR, adults based in NCR, mm-hmm. are experiencing... Um, severe anxiety symptoms. By severe, we mean they really cannot control their worry. They feel like a lot of things are beyond their control, which is, we tell them that this score could be attributed with COVID-19 because we always say that an, an abnormal response to an abnormal situation is a normal response. right? So if you're struggling because this situation is really you know, difficult, then that's that's normal. And so, but that we should not allow that to kind of be in the way of us seeking support and seeking help. But yeah, that's one of the statistics. And we also know that one in five people are having difficulty falling asleep because, syempre, there's you've taken away commute, you've taken away school, you've taken away several roles that parents and students have. So a lot of that really, parang na earthquake din yung set of routines natin. Eh. So. That really comes in the way, and so that's what we are doing with the data so far. Uh, we have also published um, one paper wherein we show how valid um, our locus of hope scale is. We, and this is our, under the leadership of Professor Alan Bernardo, um, distinguished professor at the De La Salle University, Manila. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's really productive, and we're really looking forward to uh, having an executive report. We really want because. Um, you've asked about the data, Erica, di ba? Yeah. So, ang mga sumagot sa survey namin are, we have around 11,000 in total. Right? And this is across different regions in the Philippines. 7,000 for the, the uh, 7,000 for the Filipino survey and around 4,000 to 5,000 for the English survey. Um, and, do, and so, we're looking at this data and we really want to write a report so that NGOs, um, um, government Both local and national levels could see this and say, "Okay, this is how they are, are, res- are you know, the citizens felt in the first two months of um, um, the quarantine measures." So that I think that's really helpful if we can put that together. That will be really helpful. I'm nodding my head yeah. a lot right now, <laughs> I, yeah. um, and with um, the youth as well. I yeah. personally involved here in our barangay and with the city also. And um, I could see that a lot of the youth are struggling mentally. 
Yes. So exactly. when when we ran our analysis, um, Erica, we know that the younger ones are struggling more than the older ones. Yeah. For example, yeah. So th- th- they cannot regulate their emotions really well. So that's one of our findings. Of course, this is not yet published papers, but from our preliminary analysis, we're looking at the younger um, cohorts of the country, the residents. So yung mga bata, mga estudiante, 18 to 24 years old are really having challenges regulating their emotions. Th- this is significantly um, l- lower than the emotion regulation of adults. So the mm-hmm. adults din discuss namin mental health concerns based sila dun sa base sila dun sa GPAS COVID-19 survey. So we're not only grabbing topics out of thin air and we're saying okay, this is what the data says and we should, you know, target these symptoms so that we will be, you know, more effective in our life talks. Yeah. yeah. May what do you call that? May backer kayo. I don't know that's the right yes. term. Oh, so really... a lot of people call it evidence based. Yeah. yeah. So, but um yeah, so it's just really backed up with solid statistics, solid evidence, and then we try our best to um not shortchange the students and the youth and tell them, okay, this is what we found and yeah. from research this is what works and we try to tie them all together, move them into our life talk and you know, see if, if it helps. And we've been getting a lot of positive feedback and we're ha- we're happy that that's happening. Yeah, A brief Forget- presentation of what uh, we've been doing in Life Risks PH mm-hmm. um, about um, si- the situation of well-being and mental health during COVID-19. And uh, one of them is, of course, our um, project, which is the online self-screening and self-evaluation called GPulse. Mm-hmm. So if we can move to the next few slides, we would find that um, how the pandemic, COVID-19, has influenced many of our routines. I think I alluded to this a while ago na parang we're having problems sleeping. Um, a lot of our routines are, you know, um, all over the place, so to speak. And then some experts even would say na parang the, co- the mental health concerns would be the next wave of um, problems or situations that would concern us moving forward. Historically, however, when we look at um, the data from the SARS um, epidemic and the Ebola epidemic, we know that these outbreaks really challenge us mentally and that is something that we need to acknowledge and that's something we need to work on. Yeah. So in the next slide, we'll also find that the reason behind this is Everything has changed. Um, public transportation has changed. Um, what you need to wear has changed, and so a lot of that is unprecedented. Um, so hindi natin alam kailan matatapos to. Tapos sapat ba yung uh, magiging financial resources ko? You know, we have to think about this. Um, in so we, we let's take a one or two steps back and think if we're gonna require people to wear masks and wear face shields, right? What if they can't even afford to to buy food? I mean, that's that's being swept under the rug now, and because of these parang difficult decisions that people need to make, um, there's obviously going to be some weakening of community trust, and this is the the, the thing you don't want to be happening in in a country or in a city in a in a territory. Na parang people don't trust uh, each other we, we don't want that to happen and of course with this as background we can only surmise that people are not feeling well um, people are irritable people are easily upset people are challenged and we are not yet talking about yung mga case-to-case basis we're not yet talking about pregnant women how, um, people going through dialysis um, which needs to go to the doctor for here for 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 um to the hospital, I'm sorry, here and there. So there's so many contextual variables that we need to consider. Ang mental health and well-being natin. Um, I think um, if we go to the next slide, I want to cue on the well-being of um, the Filipinos. So um, in this data of around 3,000 adults, um, 20% or 1 in 5 are experiencing severe anxiety. So um, labis na pagkabahala. So... And again, we have to put it into context. And this is near national estimates. Um, really, the average is one in five would go through some severe anxiety symptoms every year. So that's what we've been seeing. And this is higher when we look at the national uh, data, which is at, it will be at 24%. So that's um, higher. So if we go to the next slides. Yeah. And then... Like I said, one in four Filipinos are having difficulty falling asleep. They reported this 
um, again, this is in light of changes in routines uh, and changes with uh, work schedule, school schedule, or lack thereof. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So next slide, please. There we go. Okay, this I think is very important, right? Um, these are symptoms of po- post post traumatic stress disorder okay. or PTSD, yeah. and this is a scale that you will be presented only if you said you are a frontline worker. So this is hidden in if you are not a frontline worker, you will not answer this survey, right? Yeah. But we have a display logic where if you said you're a frontline worker, we will ask you about this. So we ask the 20 item scale which is also called the PTSD checklist PCL5 and what we found is half or more than half of the frontline workers are experiencing moderate to high post traumatic stress symptoms and when when we say post traumatic stress symptoms hindi nila makalimutan yung the death of a patient the date of the death of a colleague risk to themselves or others and this has been bothering them so they're they're really at the forefront. They're at the trenches. Nasa trenchera sila ng laban. They're at the front line. Um, so we, if we really need to provide some help with our frontline workers, especially with their mind and mental health. Yeah. That's really right. Of course, I don't wanna want it to be like on a very downward spiral with this. So it's good to know that at least um, 74% um, are experiencing moderate to flourishing well-being, which means these are happy people. Oh. Um, these are people who are trying to do their best to cope. Yeah. These are people who are um, just doing everything they can to take care of their well-being and mental health. Of course, um, we have to be thinking about the other 26% na parang, oh, okay, this is positive, but what about the other 26 And that's when we say, okay, we need to be providing a lot more information online on how people can help themselves and how people can help others. Right. That's a good know. That's a good number. That's good to know. It's, it's That's good not, to know. Yes. So this is like the three in four. Yeah. Yes. So at least we know. I and Filipinos actually are really known to be very happy. <laughs> you know, it other when they hear oh Filipinos, they're always so happy, you know, they're going through so much, but you know, they still try resilient. Yes. yes. So that, that's a very good number. That's very good. Right. Erica, I want to ask you something. Have you heard about um, false positivity or toxic positive, toxic optimism or something to that effect? False positivity? Right. I think I've only heard it once. Right. So it's okay. about this concept is about when we try to mask the struggle with a smiling face. And we say, kaya natin yan. We'll bounce back. And it's part of being a Filipino too. And actually, evidence suggests that we are capable of post-traumatic growth, which means after a disaster or after a national hazard, we would observe growth in well-being um, and mental health um, of, of P- Filipinos. Pinoy especially. Especially in the um, natural hazard struck um, areas in Mindanao and Visayas. Right. So that's good. But at the same time, we don't want to romanticize that too much um, so on, on our on our end we want to be careful if you feel right. negative during this time we want to validate that it's, it's okay to not be okay it's cliche for a reason yeah yeah it is yeah again to the viewers out there it's okay to not be okay if I may just um, add on to that um, there are a lot also who are scared to open up because they feel yes. like they are going to be judged. There we They're go. Yeah. We can actually talk about that a bit more later and how we how uh, the youth could deal with that. Maybe you could give us more advice on that. So um, let's move forward to voluntary the volunteerism. So right. So yeah, we did a lot of volunteer work. Like I said, we've given a lot of talks online. Again, these are all done for free. Um, because of this, uh, the Department of Education, at least in the city of San Fernando, Pampanga Division, um, worked together and they've, we've signed a memorandum of agreement that we will be providing them with a specific g for their teachers, um, students, and NTPs. And we've delivered to that um, agreement. We've given them talks as well. And then we've recently published papers, um, scientific ones, for um, using the data that we have for GPALS. And this is all coming along on with the spirit of volunteerism. This is all, none of this, 
none of these things that we do now is possible without the volunteers we have in Life Risks. Right. They're just a bunch of uh, professionals who are like, okay, I want to help out. And these are DJM, Kath, Wilson, Mark, Leandro. Um, the list is is very long. Ronnie, Cheese, of course, Paul. It's just none of this is really possible without their um, spirit of volunteer work. Right. And speaking of volunteer work, are you guys open to volunteers? Um, right. Our viewers, you oh, I want to help out. Oh, too. oh yes, definitely. Oh, we are open for volunteer work. So um, if you go to our page, you can send us a message there. Um, and you just want to you just tell us what is your strength and we will accept you as a volunteer. We are looking at increasing the numbers for us. We surely need all hands on deck yeah. so that we'll be able to put together um, this movement to the community. None of this is for, uh, none of this is done for personal um, gains. This is all for the community. Right. Yes. So again, if there are viewers yes, we, there, right there, go. Yeah. Go join us it. and become a mover. Yes. Um. So okay. looking at that list, yeah, Leandro's there, Ronnie's there, Cheese, Paul, Cat, um, DJM. So it's just really nice to see this photo. Yes, this is our team. Yeah, we call ourselves movers. Movers, oh yeah. You guys are definitely mo- <laughs> moving, <laughs> moving things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. All right. I agree. Next slide, please. All right. So that's yeah. it. Um, again, I want to thank, of course, all our volunteers. Um, Doc Allen, Sir Vaughn. Um, I'm. If I'm missing out names, I'm I'm really sorry. But none of this, Eric, I can tell you, is possible without without their undying and relentless um, attitude towards citizenship, volunteer work. If I was an HR, um, which I was, if I am an HR uh, recruitment, I'm going for these people. I'm I'm going for for volunteers who, during this pandemic, they said. You know, I'm also ha- go- going through personal things, but I'm also going to do volunteer work. We will realize in ra- life risk, we will realize that w- what we have becomes bigger when we start giving it to others. Mm-hmm. We'll realize, oh, this is something I have, pala, and you'll realize how meaningful that is when you start giving it and offering it to others. That's really, yeah. that's really true. Okay, mm-hmm. so um, there you go. Life risks phase. That's what they do, and that those are some of their projects. Ah, before we uh, move forward to the break, um, I know in the beginning I asked you about life risks PH, and you mentioned that you do have an end goal as an organization. Yes. So maybe we could, um, dive deeper into that. Um, yeah. What again is your five-year plan? Ito di pa right. Sabi ko, oo nga, no. Dapat may, may five-year plan ang mga organizations. Actually, even yourself. <laughs> diba? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yourself, it, during the test yes. broadcast, na, yep. you know, you have that goal, you will really work towards that goal. You're gonna just push yourself to, to work yes. towards that goal. Yes. So, because, so our five-year plan, so again, taking a few steps back, we, we, we know that change will happen. But you know what's unique, Erica? Yung lasting change. That's what yeah. we need to have. Like, an idea about lasting change. I mean, um, 10 years later, 20 years later, Life Risks PH will move on to new leadership, to new to new volunteer work. It could be international for, um, for all we know. But for now, um, when we built this, Paul and I, we said, we need to have this with something na feasible and that would give about um, bring about lasting change and we said all right why don't we build a crisis and suicide prevention center in Clark mm-hmm. um, and then that ever since has been our north star it's when mm-hmm. when we're tired when we're parang we've, we're occupied with our, our own personal things like in mean easy everything that we do does it align us with that with um, the creation of that and so ang imagine namin which um, Coach Ron Go from uh, Widas Foundation in, in Clark really sees in us we've had discussions about this parang it's a center na pwede ka, if you're struggling you can walk in and we can give you a place to stay for like two to three days have you engage with activities 
helpful for your mental health and well-being. Parang that's a haven for people who are struggling and they just need a day or two to kind of just be in tune with themselves, talk to others who are also going through the same thing. That's really our um, goal. And you talked about this, Erica, na parang even on a personal level, especially now that there's COVID-19, we need to be thinking kind of long term. Like in the book Atomic Habits by James Clear, he said, we need to think about life in seasons, sabi niya. Because if we, parang there's a winter, there's a spring, there's a summer and a fall. We need to think about, okay, 2020 might be my break. When, my, when, I, when I mean that, ibig ko sabihin yung, baka wala muna to. This might be a null and void year for me, for my career, for those who have lost their um, um, in source of income. So you you have that there. Na parang, think of your life in seasons. Some people might say, okay, 2020, I'm gonna crush it. People who own Zoom, Um, have earned a lot during this time, right? Pero a lot of us need to be thinking, okay, this season is this. Okay, next time. So we leave it, We really need to think about um, looking at our lives in different phases. So this is a phase and we can target the next phase moving forward. So that's um, what we want to do in Life Risk um, long term. And I can't wait to see that happen. Yeah, that, you Boy. know, yeah. what we're doing right now, that's very possible. And I'm really e- excited to see that for you, for Life Risk PH. Really? All right, yeah. so we, or maybe you could share um, a piece of advice to those who are, who want to speak up. But, you know, they're just, they're being stopped by all these negative thoughts in their head. Thoughts, exactly, yes. Oh, like, parang what's, what, what gets in their way are their thoughts. Mm-mm. parang iniisip nila na ah, wala namang makikinig that's one or if they ever listen they would just tell me kaya mo yan okay lang yan uh, magpakalalaki ka there's so many um, other lines man up and and we we always we always have that in our forehead forefront na parang that that really um, uh, demotivate us for seeking help so number one I think what you know what you can do is I always start off with this and that is if you're down stay down I, I, I really like this approach so if you're feeling down for a day just stay down because the reason why we can't go back up is because when we fall down we reject it we say I shouldn't be down I shouldn't be upset that's called emotional suppression what we need to do is to acknowledge that emotion if you're down you stay down and this is I'm quoting this from LeBron James from a couple of finals ago. He ran into a play. Parang, there's so much you can get from sports. Um, so if you're a sports fan, uh, yeah. you know. So, so there's really a lot of things we can get from sports. But this one instance, I was watching it and LeBron James had the mic. Alam mo yung Erika, sometimes they put microphones on players, di ba? Yeah. Na, na cover nila yun sa news. And oh. so he ran to the... So someone did the layup. He ran to the person to the teammate and he said while running to the teammate to help him get up LeBron was shouting stay down stay down right and then when he picked him up he said if you fall down stay down your brother will help you he said that to the guy and I'm like wow that's super powerful right so that's that's why I always say if you're feeling down accept that like today okay today is not my day right It, it, it doesn't mean tomorrow you'll still feel low and sad and depressed or anxious. But sometimes you have to acknowledge, okay, today is not my day. Today I might need to take a, some rest, you know. And so number one, if you're not feeling well, acknowledge it, like embrace it. Um, and our emotions change moment by moment, hour by hour. Few people forget that. So if you feel sad, try to embrace that in the That's, meantime. I, I think it's the question of the year, you know, parang oh. how do I, you know, how do in this new normal thing, how do I get back to doing normal things? Yeah. And so I will narrow it down to kind of four tips. Um, I'm getting this from Mental Health First Aid in England. Um, they're putting in um, a set of um, strategies for us to support ourselves amid the pandemic. This is true applicable for both working from home and for students um, on online learning or modular blended learning. And one of them is actually setting up your your routine. So get set up. That's number one. Yeah. Setting up a feasible routine. Um, and that kicks off with waking up at the same time every day. Um, that's, that's the way to 
you want to win the morning. The, Tim Ferry said, win the morning, you win the day. So you want to kick it off on the right notch. And this is also note to self because sometimes I oversleep or whatever. But we, like I said, if you're down, you stay down. <laughs> but you have to build... Uh, you have to help yourself. So one way to help yourself is to wake up at the same time every day so that you get some form of routine in because that's in your control, right? Mm -hmm. What time you wake up, you, that's 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 on you. No job, no company can, can, can change that for you, of course, unless you're on graveyard schedule. But you want to set up that routine. Mm -hmm. On this time I eat, on this time I work. So you really want to get set up. So that's number one. Wake up at the same time every day. I'm gonna let you in a, in a secret. Okay, the thing I ask myself as well is, when I wake up, I don't engage in social media. Uh -huh. um, of, course, some, yeah. of course, sometimes my I, you know, I, this is my parents tell us this. Yes, you really wanna, because the things you follow on your social media predict your thoughts. They predict your thoughts. If you see a breaking news, that automatically hijacks whatever you had planned for the day. So you want your 10 minutes to be yours. 10 minutes in 24 hours is point something percent, right? Mm -hmm. So point something percent of your day. So you really, really want to be able to give that 10 minutes to yourself. Get something to drink. So the, the last thing you want to do 10 minutes after you wake up is, is to really engage on social media. Get something to drink you know go to the wash your face or whatever pray praying is very helpful um that's wishing good to yourself and others regardless of your religious background so that's part of having that routine and i always ask myself in the morning um what will i do today that will make me sleep better tonight and i focus everything on that challenge the millennials if you can do a 15 minute i 15 second rather story in ig what is in the way of you recording yourself for 15 seconds and sending your grandmother, grandfather, mother, dad, brother, and I miss you, right? That's even less, to be yes. honest. Right. Yeah. So what gets in the way? It's a rhetorical question. Send a video or a, if you're not comfortable with that, an audio recording would do. It just gives a lot of warmth to the people you want to be connecting with. And you'll realize when you connect with them, you also give yourself a favor and like, oh, nga pala, kumusta na siya? Like that, that comes in your mind. It makes you um, connected. In this time of physical and social distancing, I mean, this is really invaluable, um, getting connected. So that's the third. So we're into the last now. So mm -hmm. again, to repeat, get, you know, get set up with routines, move your body. Three is get connected socially. And finally, and for me, this is more importantly, get some support. Especially if the first three habits do not help. Um, get some help. Get some support. You, you can be weak and vulnerable. And we will find that when we try to accept that weakness, then we can start to know what's not working and what's working. So parang you can capitalize on your strength. And that's for, that for me are like, I echo those um, tips because they, I think, are valuable um, yeah. for you to get together your, your well-being and mental health. And those are really great tips. Thank you, Norman. And I hope mm. you know, those listen, listening really took down Norman's words. <laughs> I, right. I took note. I took note. Those are really right. I can think, Yes, nice. Really yeah. nice. Talk about being successful in our careers. Remember the first few months of the pandemic, Erica, a lot of people are you know posting certificates that they are attending webinars and all that for free, right? That was the first phase. And then you the second phase is the Dalgona coffee. Everyone's baking now. Oh. And then yeah. we come into a phase where everything is selling online. Yes. And if you if you see this from that perspective, makita mo okay at the first time we can still afford the quarantine measures. We can still do things that make us grow. Yeah. But as the pandemic becomes longer, we, ano nangyari? Dalgona coffee baking, which means we're trying to make ourselves happy. We're trying to cope, because parang it's getting challenging. And then when we our financial resources has started to dip, especially those who have lost their employment, they now transition to other forms of business online. So we'll see na parang, oh, o nga, nagbabago yung coping mechanism natin in response to this pandemic as it goes further. But that's a very long-winded answer. But um, the, the, the point I'm trying to make is the thing I would say to someone who's struggling is to acknowledge that I understand that it's difficult. But 
may remind them in your own way uh, in as genuine and as authentic as you can tell them you know what the goal is just to survive this year if we, if we survive this pandemic the goal is not to be successful or if you can then do it if that makes you happy but the, at the bottom of it all you need to get through a lot of people are dying and that's that's the elephant in the room you want you want to be surviving not only for you but for your family for your loved ones so that's my tip acknowledge the difficulty embrace it help yourself um and then trust that you can do it and survive this year um for today that it okay he's here his name is miguel santiago and he is going to talk about their very very special event called the philippine festival of youth action 2020 so i'd like to call on miguel santiago i'm miguel santiago i'm uh I'm a part of co-presenters for PFYA or the Philippine Festival uh, of Youth Action 2020. So our event, uh, what uh, the objective of our event basically is to showcase local youth actions and initiatives for the global goals and communities from every region. So gusto namin na uh, ma ma showcase lahat ng mga local initiatives ng mga youth. Uh, towards our UN SDGs or our Sustainable Development Goals. Yeah. And we also want to solidify the mainstream consciousness and awareness of these global goals to the Filipino youth. Ayan. So, karamihan ngayon, no, marami pong mga kabataan siya gaya ko na sumasali ng mga webinar at ng mga events regarding the uh, Sustainable Development Goals. And mostly, most of these events are held by national organizations or mga organizations na kilala na. Uh, minsan lang kasi ma-showcase ko yung mga regional uh, initiatives, masalo na yung mga maliliit na local organizations that do actual groundwork. So, ayun po yung gusto talaga naming ma-showcase dito. And we also want to build a culture of collaboration between those local organizations and between us, the co-presenters, uh, which which are already national organizations. Para naman, in the future, we can open up really, really nice partnerships. So, itong event na to, ang daming-daming nag-organize ito. Uh, it, we have nine co-presenters, uh, and I'm from one of them. I'm one of, I'm from one of the co-presenters, which is Youth Advocates for the Philippines. And the other co-presenters or I ISEC in the Philippines, JCI Philippines, Kabataan sa Kartilya ng Katipunan, Kabataang Lingkod Bayan ng Pilipinas, National Youth Volunteers Coalition, Rotaract Philippines MDIO, SKC Philippines, and Samahan ng Kabataang Voluntaryo ng Pilipinas. So napakadaming malalaking organisasyon po ang nagtulong-tulong para ma-achieve tong event na to. Um, the event will be on, on October 20 to October 26. So, okay. ayan, so, uh, so, sa morning po, we'll have uh, from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., we'll have side events from uh, many partner organizations. Mm -hmm. Then from uh, around 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., dyan na namin isa showcase yung mga local initiatives from different local organizations and from our own organizations in the regional level. So, every, uh, every day po, there are a group of regions na aming i-represent and aming i-show. Miguel, um, for uh, talking about your event and I wish you guys all the best and and I'll see you there. I'll see you guys there. Thank you. Thank you din po for the opportunity to promote our Of course, of course. Thank you so much, Miguel. I'll see you. Bye. There you go again. So the Philippine Youth, uh, sorry, the Philippine Festival of Youth Action 2020 will be on October 20 to 25. Like what Miguel said, it's just like an Avengers assembly. You are gonna see all, almost all the youth organizations here in the country, and this is gonna be a very big event. So I suggest you guys register. You can check out the event on Facebook. Again, it's called the Philippine Festival of Youth Action 2020. And that ends our episode for today and my last episode for season two. Again, thank you so much. I'm very um, overwhelmed. I'm, I'm really enjoying um, being your anchor for making a difference. And, you know, this has been a very great journey for me. I've met so much great people. They have which they have amazing ideas and it, it's nice to learn from them and i hope you all learned from them 
stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on Z81 Radio, Manila.